actually singing one of Jankinath Prabhu's favorite bhajans, Jay Radha Jay Krishna. Um, we would come pretty much every night and just before the few weeks before Jankinath passed away and would sing bhajans to him. And this one was definitely his favorite bhajan because he was really trying to just absorb and get in the mood of Vrindavan. And uh, he really, really enjoyed this bhajan. Um, and actually one night he told us that um, he wanted it sung in a specific way. He was saying that before we sing each verse, we should sing the English, we should say the English translation so that we could all really just meditate uh, on, on the meaning of the bhajans and just be absorbed in that mood of Vrindavan. And he actually made a request to us saying that he wanted us to sort of record these kirtans and then send them to all the devotees. Um, so um, yeah, this is our sort of tribute for Jankinath Prabhu. Um, yeah, he really loved this bhajan and uh, Gopinath would, he, would always sing this to him. He, he really loved Gopinath singing and his kirtan style. And actually one night Gopinath did uh, something extra as well, which really moved Jankinath Prabhu. Gopinath, maybe you can explain that. So one night when we sang this bhajan, we added on the end, uh, Jai Jai Radhe Jai Jai Shah and um, that sort of, uh, that group of verses and uh, we sang that to him and he started to cry and he started to smile and uh, he, with his finger he was telling us to carry on uh, and I think we went for maybe 45 minutes, an hour extra after we'd already done, I don't know, however long we uh, and he particularly liked that so we'll sing that as well and uh, then we'll end off with um, uh, one thing he asked for, well, Chandra Muni Maharaj suggested to get pictures of deities and pastimes around his room. So um, uh, the deities he took, they're now no longer here, but the deities that were uh, around his room will also sing um, at the end of each of those. All glories to Radha and Krishna and the divine forest of Vrindavan. All glories to the three presiding deities of Vrindavan. Shri Govinda, Gopinath, and Madhana Mohan. Jayo Radhe, Jayo Krishna. Jayo Vrindava. I'm 
Oh 
rides in Vrindavan in order to protect the holy Dharma. All glories, all glories to Krishna's funny Brahmana friend, Madhu Mangal.
Kids Grace, Chunky Now Provoke. He who brought the treasure of divine love and who is filled with compassion and mercy, where has such a personality as Srinivas Acharya gone? Where are my Saurabh Damodar and Rupa Goswami? Where is Sanatana? Where is Raghunath Das, the saviour of the fallen? Where are my Raghunath Bhatt and Gopal Bhatt? And where is Krishna Das Kaviraj? Where did Lord Gauranga, the great dancer, suddenly go? I will smash my head against the rock and enter into the fire. Where will I find Lord Gauranga, the reservoir of all wonderful qualities? Being unable to obtain the association of Lord Gauranga, accompanied by all of these devotees, in whose association he performed his pastimes, Narottam Das simply weeped.
memory of junkie nut for brew i think it was just around two and a half years ago or so i just graduated from university and i was just at the i was at the manor i was just outside the temple room and actually himish you you were there with me as well I don't remember this but we were just loitering outside the temple room you know just chilling and then junkie nut for brew comes and then he sees us and you know in his sort of you know usual like positive bubbly like buzzing spirit he comes up to us and he just starts speaking with us and we just have like an amazing conversation with him and then um, during that conversation as well, like he, he actually like invites us, like oh you should come around next week for like lunch or something. I think he was staying sort of in one of the cottages with um, some other devotees, and he just started, you know, he's inviting us around, and I just remember feeling so touched after that because I was like, you know, I'm just like some nerdy PS kid, like with some rude boy chilling at the manor, and like <laughs> he, he comes up to us and he wants to invite us and have a genuine sort, of, you know, like uh, catch up and, and spend time with us. So. That was my earliest, sort of, probably one of my first sort of, proper interactions and conversations with Junkie Nath Peru. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I just remember feeling really touched after that. Um, and then for, then for a while then, I didn't really have much you know, interaction with him. Saw him at a few events here and there, but um, yeah, I didn't see him so much. Uh, but then, you know, coming when, when he sort of came to the manor earlier this year because of his health and he started staying here, I, you know, I got the privilege of spending more time with him. And, um, and yeah, there was even some days sort of towards um, the end when his health was getting worse, he needed sort of people to just sort of serve him full time. Um, and so I was doing that for one day. And I remember that on that day, he, he asked me to make him some tea, but he was giving me these specific instructions, how like it can't be too hot because then it was burn his throat, but it can't be too cold because he needs something to soothe it. And he was giving me all these instructions, put it in this cup, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I do it, and that was the most stressful tea making I've ever done. I make tea every day, but at that time I was like checking it every 30 seconds, like, oh, is this too hot, is this too cold? And I was just like doing so many crazy calculations just because I wanted it to be perfect for, for, for Junkie Nath Peru. And then <laughs> I nervously, I give him the tea, I give it to him to sip, and then he takes a sip, 
and then he's like, oh, that is perfect, Hirsch. And then he said this, which actually like got me really shocked. He's like, Hirsch, this is why you got a first at Warwick. Um, now, I'm not saying that to big myself up. Um, I was shocked because like, I didn't even remember telling him that like ever. Mm. Um, and then when I was thinking like, how did he even know that? Or how did he sort of remember? Then I, I took it, I understood that. I probably told him that just after I graduated when I met him there at the manor. And that was two and a half years ago. But I was just so shocked because I didn't even remember him telling him that. And it was so long ago and we didn't even speak much since then, but he still remembered that. And especially in the sort of the condition that he was in, he was in so much pain, but still, you know, his, his mind was so sharp and, and he still remembered that. And that really like moved my heart. I was, I was just so, yeah, like, yeah, it, it really definitely moved me. And I was just so amazed at that. Um, so yeah, that was, um, and then yeah, since he sort of passed, I guess, um, yeah, he was, Jackie Nothu was definitely on my mind. Um, yeah, it's still been on my mind the, the last few weeks. And um, I remember sort of, we had a few memorial events and things like that. And it was so amazing just to hear all the glorifications about Jankin Nathuru. And one thing I kept hearing was sort of his just, his, his interactions with all, everyone he met, whether it was devotees, non-devotees, just anyone. He just always had positive interactions. He was always uplifting and inspiring people. And um, I kept on hearing this in all the memorial programs and I was sort of reflecting on that and sort of now even in my interactions, you know, I'm, I'm making more of a conscious effort to just be more sort of positive, um, more grateful and just more uplifting um, because I know that's exactly what Jankin Nathabu did. And so I've just been sort of meditating on that these, these last few weeks. And yeah, definitely really gonna miss Jankin Nathabu. And uh, yeah, Hare Krishna. <clears throat> So for me, my relationship with Janaki Nath didn't really, um, it was after he came back to the manor that I really started to appreciate his presence, his association. Before, when I was in the ashram with Janaki Nath, um, I think like many people have said, I, I feel I undervalued him, I underappreciated him um, at the time. Although he was always, as everyone has shared, bubbly, and he would start these sanghas with us, he would do like these Bhagavatam sanghas every week with us, with a few of the ashram boys and, and just to uh, inspire us. And <clears throat> I remember when he first came back to the manor, uh, you know, I was actually quite nervous to see him because it's like, oh, okay, a dying man, he's got cancer, I've got to be kind of sensitive. And then I walk in and he's like lying on his exercise ball and I'm, I mean, it's kind of shocked because he's lost a lot of weight and he looks very different. And then he looks up at me and he's like, oh. and it's like the same Janaki Nath again. Like, and he's like, oh, hi Sam, like, how's it going? And then immediately I felt so appreciated and so I was like, just walking away that I was just completely shocked because I was expecting to go in there like, oh, how are you doing, Jenny? Like, you know, how you would be with a dying man. But it was the other way around. He was like asking about my parents, asking about, like you were saying, he, he remembered all this stuff from like a few years ago. Um, so yeah, just his ability to make people feel wanted, appreciated, no matter what his condition was. Um, and when I walked in here, he was obviously in so much pain, um, but immediately he just changed it to serve me. You know, so, so, uh, so amazing. Yeah, and I think my appreciation continued to grow as, as he was here, as I got the opportunity to be around him and, and see his level of surrender. And that was one of the main things that really, um, inspired me was seeing him surrendering at each step and um, as you guys know when he would take a shot of morphine to relieve the pain generally he would uh, then <laughs> share some nectar <laughs> <laughs> so um, so one time after this is towards the end last few days one time after he took uh, some morphine um, in a very joking mood he, he shared with me um, some wisdom. He said, never pray to Krishna for what you don't want in life. Uh, so he was kind of joking. He was saying that I prayed to Krishna, please take away all this pain and things. And, and he said, but Krishna gave me more. And he said, uh, so he was praying for many different things to Krishna, but what I don't want. And um, but every level he was surrendering. And then his final fear um, was the idea that Vaishnava's devotees had to personally take care of him, take care of his personal needs, bathe him, wash him, clothe him like that. That was his, he wasn't afraid of death, he wasn't afraid of the pain, but he was afraid of accepting service from others. Um, this was his final fear. 
and he, he shared with us that even that now I've had to I've had to surrender. So externally Krishna stripped everything from, from him, but internally he was giving him so much and he was just surrendering to it and accepting that at every moment. So that was that was so inspiring. And um, yeah, the last thing I did for him was put on his socks uh, just before he left the hospital. And um, even then I, I caught his toe and I think I caused him a lot of pain. <laughs> right. I think, you know, but, so I'm not sure how much use I was in serving him, but he definitely gave me a lot. And since passing, I think I've been reflecting on his, his selfless nature. One time I was, I was with him and you know, the thought just came into my head, oh, I, I wonder if I can get his nice saffron dotis once he, like this actually came into my head and then I just like, since then I've been just reflecting on his selfless nature and how I also need to improve. <laughs> you know, all I can think about is that, that kind of stuff and that's what's coming in my head and is Janaki Nath and he's constantly in so much pain and all he can think about is serving others. So that's the real lesson for me. And I pray that Janaki Nath will can absorb some of that selfless qualities. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> so, you know, for me, um, you know, I met Janaki Nath, you know, like five, six years ago when I first came into Krishna consciousness and um, for me he's just, you know, such a unique devotee and what I mean by that is he, <clears throat> he really makes um, Krishna consciousness attractive and that really stood out to me and so many other youths, you know, you know, with his magic tricks and um, just how he's able to, <clears throat> you know, how, how he's able to, you know, give classes and, you know, teach us Vedic philosophy in such a cool way and such a way that's relatable, you know, to all of us. And, you know, it's fascinating some of the, the points he makes, you know, he's a, he was a very intellectual, uh, you know, very intellectual person. and. Um, one of the other things was that you know he's so he's so you know very personal. He's very he's everyone's uh, ever well wisher. Mm -hmm. You know he's he's always you know concerned about you know how's everyone's doing in life. You know education. Mm -hmm. So you know <clears throat> you remember each year he asked me <laughs> what did I get for university, <laughs> and each year I told him at first, <laughs> and each year he was surprised. <laughs> 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 because you know, <laughs> he thought I'd be raving and things, and, <laughs> you know, partying up and whatever. But no, <laughs> obviously that was uh, you know he was joking from his side. But um, no, he always showed so much you know concern and care for everyone. You know, he he was so relatable. You know, and that's that's what made him, yeah. that's what made him so attractive. But that's what made you know Krishna consciousness so attractive as well. And um, you know. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a great example, you know, on his final few days, um, <clears throat> he was always himself, you know, you, you, you never even sensed that, you know, he was going through much, through so much suffering, and, um, you know, visibly, I mean, you know, you could see it, but just internally, the way he spoke to us, the way he spoke to others, the way, you know, you know, he behaved, he was just himself, you know, he was never... You know, he never showed that he was in pain and agony, and he, even then, he still was making Krishna consciousness attractive during his final few weeks. <clears throat> and one thing, you know, I can take away from him is, you know, um, just bef just like a couple of days after I moved into the manor, you know, he greeted me, and I was just like so shocked to see him. But he greeted me, and still the same bubbly self, you know. But we was just whispering to each other, you know. He was just um, saying how. He was really, you know, happy that I'm here and one thing I can take away from him is always be yourself, always be authentic. <laughs> and he laughed and he said that it never change. So yeah, I hope Janky Nath watches it over us all. And um, yeah, thank you so much for Free Free Association. Uh, Hare Krishna. Uh, I met Janaki Nath Prabhu first uh, about 13 years ago when he came to the ashram. I don't remember my first interaction because I was about six or seven. Um, but I remember one thing that we used to do when I was about 10 or 11, so this is 10, 10, 10 11 years ago. Um, uh, it was, we were doing deity greeting. He must have noticed that my attention to, to the deities was not there. I don't know, I, was, I don't know what I was focusing on, maybe the Madonna or something. <laughs> and, um, 
So then one morning during data recruiting, he calls me up, no, just before data recruiting, um, he calls me up and said, okay, today um, sit next to me in front of the donation box. Uh, there's a little gap, very small gap, and uh, we just about fit. And, uh, and then we, we would uh, pick out 10 things that we liked about the outfit that day. Um, like say it was like the jewelry, the crown, the, the, the color of the flowers, the dress on Tulsi Maharani or something. And uh, we did that for about, I think maybe two, three years uh, when he was there because uh, as Ganesh Priya Prabhu mentioned in his, um, in his tribute, he, um, <laughs> they were never there. Well, they weren't there very often because they would do um, a lot of late night programs. So him and Ganesh Priya would, uh, wouldn't <laughs> really turn up. So when he was there, we would sit together and uh, just look at the deities and I think he really helped improve my attention to the deities because I had to, because I had to give him 10 things which I liked about the deities. So yeah, um, another thing that we did, um, thing he did for me was uh, during my A-levels, I was telling him I was struggling with my revision and uh, at this point he was struggling with his cancer and he, uh, he told me to go to his, uh, he called me to his house um, and then I went I turned up at his door and he made me like, uh, I think two grilled sandwiches and they were really good, <laughs> really nice grilled sandwiches and then we sat together and we went, we went, uh, we spent about two hours going through each of my A-level modules and uh, he basically made me a timetable uh, up to my exams and I had to go, uh, every day I had to give him a feedback on how much work I did, if I managed to cover what I was supposed to and I managed to follow, about, follow it for about two, three weeks. <laughs> which is probably why I flopped my exams. So um, I'm very thankful to him all the time because he, throughout my throughout his time at the ashram, um, he always treated me like his younger brother. He was always so concerned about my well-being. Always like Himesh, he was always asking about uh, education, or even spiritual life. And he was like, less a, like an older brother. He was a really nice mentor. Um, and we also had a lot of banter together, especially on Janmashtami prep. Um, I always used to. Um, asked to be on his team and then we would just go off and we would do service but also would have a lot of fun and mm. it, was just, it was amazing, that was probably my best times. Mm. Um, in his time here um, we were thankful, we were uh, fortunate enough to be able to serve him quite personally and um, one thing that we used to do every day was uh, a massage and, uh, and you can see he was in so much pain but it was, it was quite relieving. And then uh, every time I was massaging him, he would start. He would start asking about the well-being of my mum and sister, mm. um, and he would like say, "Oh, if 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 they need anything, just let me know. If I, if there's anything I can do for them." I'm in my head. I'm thinking like, he's going through so much pain, um, and he's in his like final final stages, and he's still thinking about the well-being of other devotees. So I was always keeping like I was always in my mind like, what an amazing example he is. So concerned for other devotees. Um, and then one joke he made for me is um, to me is uh, I don't know, he was I don't know I must have got emotional he was saying oh I'm really thankful for for your massages and I must have got a bit of, I don't know I started saying some emotional stuff and he's not he's, he doesn't normally like that stuff <laughs> so he told me um, he's like stop stop with the emotions you can save that for your wife in the future <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I think so that was there we just, we just both just cracked up uh, that was a nice memory. Um, another memory we had while he was here was um, me and Himesh started reading um, uh, Lokanath Maharaj's Vajramandal Parikram mm -hmm. uh, and we used to go, um, uh, we used to do it day by day just and it was a really nice book because you could literally feel like you were with the Parikram and um, he would like test us to see where the places we went every day and uh, mm -hmm. he, he would be the, he was the most attentive, like he was in the most pain. <laughs> <laughs> he was suffering the most, but he was the most attentive to every place we went, and he, we, we would forget, and he would have to tell us again, like we're, what, what we just read. Um, <laughs> Definitely caught us out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all the time. All the time. Um, and yeah, the final thing I did for him was uh, what was it? Oh, I was with him during a morning program, uh, and then I think the last thing I did was it was just uh, like a twenty-minute massage for him, and yeah, I think yeah that was the last time I interacted with him interacted with him. Um, and what I've taken away, um, I'd, I'd, um, during the memorials I think I was like, I was shocked to see how many devotees were touched by him. 
I think I, as in a lot of devotees have said this, but uh, they completely underestimated him because you know he was such a a joke. A lot, I mean, joker. <laughs> 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 just bantering around everyone, just having fun with everyone. So sometimes you wouldn't notice just how deep he was and mm -hmm. how spiritually advanced he was. Um, but then during the memorial, I realized that he had touched so many devotees and he brought so many devotees to Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. And like him has said, he made it so attractive. Um, so yeah, why taking away from him, um, from his life is just uh, just to be grateful for, for such devotees that, because there's so many devotees, we have so many great devotees. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when they leave, we only, realize, we, we only realize how great they were when they leave. So just trying to be more grateful for the devotees we have here and expect just associate with them because we don't know they could know anyone can go at any time and we don't, we want to stop we want to appreciate them while they're here as well so yeah that's what I think Hare Krishna Hare Krishna um, I don't like Abhay I was quite young when I met Janakuna for the, for the first time so I don't actually remember so much except the magic tricks I was looking for his um, when we were sorting out his things after he left I saw all the old magic tricks I, I'd seen him do, and I, I, he had books of them and stuff like that. And uh, books like this, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like we, we filled up a whole crate of things, just magic related things. And, uh, <laughs> it was funny looking for all the, um, uh, all the old tricks and stuff like uh, that he performed. And maybe ten year old me didn't appreciate it as preaching, but uh, <laughs> I can see now how, how effective it was at preaching. Like I said, all the people he touched, um, all the uh, people he brought to Krishna consciousness. Um, I think my main interaction with him was when I arrived here, uh, which is the day before he arrived here. Uh, and um, then I think the first thing I did on my, one of the first things I did as part of my services was looking after him, which is very lucky. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, I, 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 I'm not very appreciative, or I'm not appreciative enough of all the things he gave me just in his few weeks uh, uh, here. But um, one of the things he gave to me was uh, some attraction for Vrindavan, which hopefully I can hold on to. Uh, and uh, the way he gave that was, one of, the, one of the things we used to do was listen to Dina Bhanu Prabhu's uh, narrations of Vrindavan pastimes. Mm -hmm. So we'd listen to that together. And then, as uh, the boy said, about Rajmanu Parakram. Uh, and then later on, Gopal Champu, which uh, Chandamuni Maharaj told him to read in his final days. And because uh, we couldn't find a copy, I bought him a copy. So now I've got uh, a copy. And uh, yeah, I'm very grateful for that. And uh, hopefully I can keep up some, some attachment for, uh, for Vrindavan, like he did, follow his example. And then um, even when I, when I arrived, on one of, the, one of my uh, times massaging him, we spent about three and a half, four hours talking about, I don't know how, but it ended up being my life. And we were, we were talking about problems and we somehow had some problems in common obviously his were a bit more severe than mine but uh, uh and we we're talking about them and he did an exercise with me where we switched positions and he recorded me like playing devil's advocate with my own problems and i don't know how i ended up in that position but then he kind of pushed me when i said no <clears throat> and uh so i've still got that recording which i'm grateful for um and uh yeah all the time i got to spend i wish i got to spend more time and i was more appreciative at that time and still now but uh yeah, he gave me a lot. There's many more things, um, but uh, yeah, I think uh, one of the things I took from after he left was uh, again this Vrindavan thing. Um, I, there's a picture in the living room of Krishna and Balaram and the Gopas in Vrindavan with the cows, and uh, I remember the morning after he left, looking at that picture and thinking because somebody had made a comment about him going to Vrindavan that this is where he is now. And uh, that was one of the, for me it was a big boost in my faith, mm -hmm. that for somebody to go through so much pain and still be so attracted and so attached to Krishna consciousness, there's got to be something in it. And uh, my faith isn't mm -hmm. strong enough to maybe see that on my own, but through him I can see that well, there's got to be something there because if he's, a, if he's managed to um, hold on to Krishna consciousness through all this, then well, what excuse do I have? Um, mm -hmm. So that's one of the main things I've taken away, among many, many other things. Uh, so I'm very appreciative of that. How do you go? And this was a couple of weeks, maybe one or two weeks before he left. Uh, I was sitting here and I was giving him his morphine. 
and it was the afternoon after he'd had his call with all the Chao Party devotees. Mm. And um, and uh, so I sat there with the first thing he said, mix it and take out this syringe and stuff like that. Syringe, um, I don't know what it's called, yeah. pipette. Okay. So I, I took it out and then I was sitting there waiting. He said, just give me a minute. Um, and w he, was, he was smiling, laughing when he said it. Uh, so I was sitting there and gave him maybe five minutes. And uh, then uh, uh, I gave him his first dose. And then uh, again, he said, give me, give me a little bit of time. I said, yeah, no problem. Uh, and uh, then he started to cry. And I, I only noticed because I was sitting back here and I saw that he was leaning over the bed and I saw it, the tears on the floor. Uh, and uh, then I looked at him and uh, after a couple, uh, a couple of seconds, he looked back at me and he said, sorry, the, the Vaishnavas have done so much for me. I can't, uh, sometimes I don't know what to do. Uh, uh, just so he cries. Uh, I guess it helps with the uh, emotional side of it. And Radhananda had just arranged another call the next day with Bhakti Prasamrit Maharaj and Gogo Prabhupada, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, and uh, yeah, oh, well, I really hope I can one day and vibe just a little bit of that, that appreciation for the devotees. Mm. Yeah, I haven't got it, but hopefully one day I can I can uh, get a little bit of that appreciation. Even one of the you know, one of the pictures here was Raya Gopinath, and I was thinking that. So I'm just going to continue because I've forgot this as well. <laughs> um, but uh, I remember seeing Raya Gopinath and thinking, "Well, my name's Gopinath, so well, it should be Gopinath Das." And then thinking, "Well, this is who I'm supposed to be serving." Uh, and I remember thinking that in the kirtan and um, trying to watch the deities or what's I, what's I sing. So hopefully I can sing with a, a little bit of uh, love for Krishna. And um, that's become, I've now got it on my phone and uh, every time I, I chant something like that, I'll put the picture there, the same picture, same outfit. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've developed, I wouldn't say attraction, but some small attraction. Krishna has been kind and given some small attraction for those deities. And if it wasn't for him putting up those deities because he liked them, then I would never have found that, uh, at least not for a while, until I go to Chapati. Uh, and um, yeah, that's become a really, every day, a few times a day, I look at that picture mm. uh, of those deities in that outfit. And uh, yeah, if it wasn't for him liking those deities so much and putting up on his wall, then I would never have got that. Mm. So I'm very appreciative of that, but appreciative of that as well. He passed away on the... On yeah, the day that they were installed, right? Yeah, they were installed, yeah. Oh, wow. How many? I don't know how many years ago. <coughs> Deep connection, I guess. Yeah, that's strange. So, um, I remember last year during lockdown, lockdown was happening, and uh, my mentor, Sandy Pan Krishna Prabhu, he organised um, weekly Bhagavad Gita classes, and um, and funny enough, I you know I got to spend time with Jankinath and you know so many other senior devotees as well. As you know, um, Jankinath is also one of Sandipan Krishna's mentors. And you know, just throughout those sessions, like sometimes he would see that you know maybe maybe I wasn't just uh, I wasn't picking up on stuff. So he actually <laughs> made me present class the next week. <laughs> so you know, he he gave me a whole he gave me a whole. Um, a booklet on the Bhagavad Gita and you know he asked me to present you know I think it was chapter two so the whole summary of it so that's <laughs> a lot of pressure but you know during during those um during the Bhagavad Gita sessions you know he would just say, sh share so much wisdom and he wasn't even the one facilitating it and actually it, it came to a point where it was actually just reverse mentoring he would mentor everyone else including Sandy Fan who was actually meant to facilitate it so it was just you know incredible on his knowledge from you know from the Gita to the Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Tamrata, you know, just inside and out, you know, just <laughs> he knew the knowledge and he could just pull out verses, you know, descriptions of the purport, you know, out of the hat, you know, just like a wizard. So yeah, he was incredible. And um you yeah, know really uh, really appreciate his association, you know, throughout those weeks in lockdown because you know, <clears throat> I remember he was trying to do like different things, just coding courses, just just things to you know pass time during lockdown, skills to learn. But you know, the the most important thing during that time was you know being around with devotees and just developing a strong connection and actually 
going deep into Krishna consciousness and the philosophy which we try to do throughout those weeks. So, thank you, Prabhu. Okay. Um, another fast, uh, fast time I had with him was in the mentorship retreat, Pandas had a mentorship, um, I think it was 2020, at Buckland. And uh, the whole trip I got sick, I had, um, I know, I had stomach cramps. And uh, it was like really painful, so I was wasn't doing, I was didn't get to do much on that trip. But um, and I was I was in the, I was in the same room as Janika and Prabhu, and uh, of course at this point he was suffering a lot still with his cancer. And uh, but every day, like a few times a day, he would like get me a hot water bottle. He'd make sure he was come and check if I was alright. He would see if I wanted any prashadam, any water, and uh, he was just always checking if I was alright. And even after the trip, a few days after, he would message me. Like, oh, Abe, how's it going? How's your stomach cramps? Are they better? Mm -hmm. And then he's, he's su su um, suffering with, with his cancer in so much pain. <laughs> and he's just more worried about my well being, which is nothing. His, the pain I had was nothing compared to the what he had. So, yeah, the amount of care he had was unbelievable. And then also on that trip, I was telling him that I, had a, uh, I struggled with my communication. Like, and, like, and how to com uh, communicate with different people. So, so he he always he was someone who always made me do stuff that was out of my completely out of my, out of my comfort zone, like always. <laughs> and uh, I didn't like it, but he made me do it in the end. And one one of these things was uh, I had to go in the mentorship, go around and uh, go around to people I'd never spoken to before or never met. Um, there wasn't that many of them, but the fair, there was there was a decent amount. And um, I had to take a selfie with them, <laughs> and uh, which I hated that. Anyway. I hated selfies. Uh, and then I had to um, ask them what they learned from mentorship, um, what they did for a living, and what they find inspiring about Krishna consciousness, something like that. And me talking to new people was something I, I didn't like doing, but I had to do it and I had to take the selfie and then send it to him. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, and I, I, le I left it to the last day when everyone was leaving. Uh, so I think I did about four or five pictures and I sent them all to him and he's like, you still got more to do. And then he's like, because you didn't finish, when you go back to uni, I want you to approach about five, five random people. I need to approach five random people at Brunel and get, to get a selfie with them and get them into the case you suck. And I was like, okay, now you've just taken it a step too far. Too <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I got one, I, I think I approached one person and I was like, nah, never again. <laughs> so yeah. That was that. So yeah, it was always trying to make me a better person. Mm. And uh, yeah. Maybe you can share the selfies. Huh? <laughs> share the selfies. No, it's alright. It's just it's just between me and him. <laughs> I still got those on the chat. And I still got the chat with the, with the WhatsApp chat telling him telling me to do more stuff so I haven't done enough. Right. It's all right. Next year. <laughs> One thing I remember he was uh he was reversing in the morning I had to give him some uh, laxative. And uh, sometimes it reacted funny with him, and he would. So um, he took. I gave this laxative, and then he started to like, as if he was gonna throw up, and he was like scrambling and like. Uh, I was getting panicky, but he was like about to throw up, and he was scrambling around trying to find a bowl. He was making signals to me like get the bowl, because he couldn't speak, and I was like, what do I do? And I was panicking, and uh, finally I figured he needed the bowl, and so I gave him the bowl, and he kind of, uh, he didn't anyway, he. J coughed up of uh, some some stuff and then uh, and then he just looked at me and said yeah son that's my alarm clock and I was just like staring at him in shock like like what do you mean <laughs> like, I had no idea and then I'm, he had to tell me I'm joking with you son I'm joking state of shock I had no idea what to do <laughs> and then uh, but, yeah he was like that's my alarm clock I'm just joking <laughs> he was constantly in that <laughs> okay, so <laughs> yeah, one time um, yeah, I was serving him, and then I think it was his family, some relatives and stuff came. And so I was in the room and I was getting him some stuff, <clears throat> just getting him some stuff here and there. And then his family were there, so then we we're just introducing, I was just introducing myself to the family, they're introducing themselves. And I think his cousin or someone, she, like, she was saying, him, Oh, yeah, I'm Kushbu, I'm JD's cousin or something. Like, oh, nice to meet Kushbu, I'm going to that. And then he was like, yeah, Hare Krishna. And then, and then JD's like, now I was just thinking of all the girls that you know with the name, <laughs> who has the name Krishna. <laughs> and then we're just cracking up. And it's just funny how true it was. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> he, he can read minds. He can read minds. <laughs> 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 
my day. Literally. <laughs> 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 Yeah, another thing, uh, fast and another thing. I was serving him during the um, during the morning program, and uh, he he slept for about an hour, and then he woke up and he said he wanted some water. But as you know, as Hush mentioned before, it had to be not too Perfect. hot because it would burn him and not too cold. And then um, I made the I made the water. I checked it so many times. I spent like five <laughs> minutes doing it. I came back and he drank some. He, as in, he, I think he was he was in a bit of a funny mood, and I, as in, he, he explained why I was in a funny mood later. Quite funny, but um, so uh, so he took some water and it was too hot, and I he like <laughs> he get he had just like like just he got he just got mad basically. He just gave a face, so he looked really mad. And then uh, and then I and I and then I dropped something. He's like, "What are you doing?" And then like <laughs> and then like two minutes later, he told me, "Oh, but there's a reason I I got mad at you." Basically, when he was sleeping. He had a dream that I left him, I abandoned him, I, uh, I abandoned him in a field, uh, in the manor fields, we were walking and I just left him there. So, uh, and then he woke up and he, because of that dream he was already quite mad at me. <laughs> so he told me, that, sorry, don't, don't take my madness seriously, it's just because I had a dream of you and you, left, you abandoned me in a field, so I was just annoyed. <laughs> I was like, I, 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 told, I, told, I told him I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it, because like, I don't know, I'm not sure. But I promised him I would never abandon him in the field. <laughs> Yeah, that's just one person. Yeah, yeah. Our friend was born there. <laughs> um, so actually one of the last things he said to me was, uh, we didn't kill down, it was the night before he left for the hospital and um, I asked him, oh, what should I sing? <laughs> and, <laughs> and he, he said to me, he said to me, Gangster's Paradise by Coolio. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, well, well, I didn't sing that, but uh, then he said no, the usual. So Jaja Rani, Jaja Sham, so I made it a singer. <laughs> but um, actually, I was, I don't know, maybe I'm you not. See, he, he was singing the tune in his head, he, he was actually getting ready for the call. <laughs> yeah, I grew that game. He's going to check You know, it's serious. Uh, uh, <laughs> not genuinely. And then, um, um, yeah, I sang Jaja Rani, Jaja Sham instead. You searched it up on your phone. But yeah, yeah, after searching it up on my phone. I uh, need you to play the chords. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Uh, and um, but then I don't know. I'm not so not so spiritual. So the day after, I was stuck in my head, uh, and um, I was thinking about the song, and I remembered that it's based on a song by Stevie Wonder, and um, then uh, I also remembered. I think they were once saying that uh, the devotees did a song with Stevie Wonder. Uh, I, I don't know if he's maybe. He saw them in Harinam or something like that, and then he asked them to come to his studio. And um, so then I looked up the song that was uh, that Gangster's Paradise was, I don't know, dedicated to or something. Uh, and uh, it was the same song that the devotees sang the Mahamatra in the background of for Stevie Wonder. Mm. And I don't know, it was a mad, like, came full circle. <laughs> uh, that even, like, even something that was seemingly not very spiritual. Uh, was spiritual. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, I never ended up telling him that because he'd left. But um, uh, yeah, I thought it was, it was quite quite cool how the how the devotee can uh, make anything spiritual. And um, when he says it, when I say it, it's not going to be very spiritual. But when he says it, uh, Krishna finds a way to uh, bring full circle. And um, the other thing was uh, that uh, one time about a week before he left. Uh, just after his call with, I think, Goranga Prabhu and some other Chapati devotees, um, I was giving him his morphine, and uh, he started to cry. And I only noticed because um, he was leaning over the bed, and the, I saw the tears on the floor. And I looked up at him, and um, uh, and uh, after a few seconds, he looked at me and he said uh, that the the kindness of the Vaishnavas is sometimes just is too much, and I hope one day I can. Uh, I can get a bit of that appreciation that he had for the devotees and mm. I think the next day he was going to have a call with uh, Bhakti Rasamrit Maharaj or, the, or in the coming few days Bhakti Rasamrit Maharaj or maybe Gogo Prabhupada if I remember correctly that Radha Damana was arranging for him and um, yeah and he was crying and he was saying mm. that, uh, uh, that the devotees are just so kind mm. and uh, well he's done a lot for me so hopefully one day I can I can reciprocate that appreciation um, and uh, yeah very appreciative of you. Johnny Kimas Prabhu, Kim Joe!